Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm Catherine, co-host Bestie. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Let's take two. Yes. We did this yesterday. The and whole I, thing. The whole thing. And I forgot to switch over. So we use a program called Audacity. I forgot to switch over to this little device thing you have to go through. So the mics weren't on. And right. it was just the built-in speaker on my computer and uh that makes a huge difference in the sound it does but so, here's the thing yeah we both believe that this episode is going to be better than the one we recorded yesterday let's believe it let's believe let's it let's just why check not? on like yeah yeah so today's topic is intolerance <laughs> like wait what is it <laughs> pain tolerance pain tolerance that's an interesting topic it's an interesting concept uh, it sure is. It is. Yeah. I was thinking I, about this as I was, as, as yesterday when you let me know that we didn't have what we thought we had, mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, well, now we can think more about oh, it. Did you think that? I did. Oh, good. Well, I was I in was the, it. <laughs> you were like, oh, darn it. Well, I was like, oh, darn it. But I didn't want to look into it anymore. I wanted to craft. So I, I made some jewelry. <laughs> I did have the sense of, oh, no, you know, because yeah. we just invested a couple hours of our time that mm, yes. we're, now we have to redo it. However, you when you sent me the message, I was in the middle of trying to figure out the technology thing that I was doing mm -hmm. for social media. Mm -hmm. And I told you about it earlier, just how it all flopped. And, mm -hmm. and I lost two hours of my time again. So that's four yeah. hours of my time. Yes. Bye bye. Well, good for you for trekking on because yeah. on, on my end... So I was all, I had carved out time to work on our podcast and make clips. And also I thought, you know, I'm just going to edit the one that we just recorded oh, yeah. right away. And I don't always do that the same yeah, day. Good thing. And I went to listen to it. I'm like, darn it. Well, I was frustrated. So I thought to myself, I need some crafting. <laughs> yeah, a little relief. I need some Pain therapy. Relief. Yeah. And it was rainy yeah. and cloudy and dark. So I'm like, I, I just, I got to craft. Well, I think this is going to be better than it, you know. I hope so. Cause ever was. It was good. I, I did listen to half of it. Yeah. I'm like, darn it, that was a good one. Anyway, if you're just tuning in for the first time to our podcast, welcome aboard mm -hmm. to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway train. All it's aboard. Out to leave the station. Catherine and I are two besties that bring a relevant topic to the table mm -hmm. once a week. And we just brainstorm and think, what do we care about? <laughs> we think it's relevant. We right. hope it's, we pray it's relevant. And the reason that we love pain tolerance is because we Catherine, joke about it. We joke about it all the time. We've been besties for 20 years or whatever the number is now. Catherine's um, pain tolerance is high. Mm -hmm. Mine is low. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that pain tolerance is 100% self-reporting. It is self-reporting. No. It is too. We went over this yesterday. No, we didn't. The doctor, the <laughs> medical staff said to me, wow, you have a high pain tolerance. And I didn't even tell you that they said it to Kenny too. A, a neuro doctor said it to Kenny. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at me with these eyes that say agree with me. Uh -huh. Yeah, but even the reporting of your pain tolerance to them mm. is self-reporting. There is no way for science to really get a handle on, there's no like screening for pain tolerance. There's no way for them, like they can take your temperature, right? They mm -hmm. can do your blood pressure and measure it accurately, but they rely on self-reporting 100% of the time when it comes to pain. I see your point. Yeah. Well, that's actually how they came up with that scale, the zero to 10, mm -hmm. zero being you have mm -hmm. no pain, yeah. 10 being it's the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. They needed to come up with some kind of a measurement that, again, it's self-reported. Okay. You know, because it's based on you. Anyway, so mm -hmm. this is what we do. We bring a topic <laughs> to the table and, and we, then we talk about it. We yeah. debate, we research, <laughs> and we try to... Um, curate yeah we curate the internet for information and we also curate our own experiences and bring it to this uh podcast table um with entertainment we try oh, yeah we try Hopefully. to be fun and funny ish yeah yeah, just, and then we're that's gonna just how we roll so then we roll <sighs> that way hopefully well, on the we podcast can't help it yeah it's, it's not gonna change it's now. funny because sometimes i feel like we need to be serious we oh. need to 
at, you know, because we don't, we don't know stuff. Yeah, at grown. <laughs> we know stuff. Well, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We don't we have go, any credentials, but right. we know things. And then we look up on the internet, and then we believe it. Ish. Right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, then at the end of the podcast, we're going to give you a call to action. We always try to give mm-hmm. you something to work on, and also a little inspiration. Ah, uh, yes. And that's what we all want in life, right? Yes. We want information, entertainment, inspiration. Encouragement. Yes, that's our podcast. Yeah. So, Woo-hoo. yeah, let's go. Laugh anyway. Right. All right. Well, we've got a couple takeaways. We've got three of them listed here. I'm going to read them off. Good. Refresh my memory. We're going to help you understand pain tolerance. Is it real? Uh-huh. That's the question. Is it real? Yeah. It's kind of a rhetorical cool. question. Secondly, we're going to share our experiences with pain. Okay. Catherine's <laughs> going to share hers, and I am going to share mine. Yay. And finally, we're going to go over some coping mechanisms. Right, that's right. Yeah, and I've mm-hmm. come I've come to learn about a few new ones I since know. since yesterday. Mm-hmm. So this is good. Good. All right. And at the end we're going to give you a little prescription, something that you can take away as a little prescription of how to alleviate some pain in your life. Yeah. So Call stay tuned action. all the way to the end. Yeah. All right. And then the inspiration. Right. The scripture. Mm-hmm. We have a verse, a Bible verse. Yeah. You still have it over there? I sure do. Good. Romans coming from romans something yep good don't give it away oh okay all right what say you Catherine? well is pain tolerance real yes it is according to (laughs) yeah (laughs) many the the pros they all say that it's real and it is as unique as the person why is that because some people are more sensitive to Mm -hmm. pain Mm -hmm. than others and it, like it, we'll go into that a little bit more, but a, a lot of it's got to do with biological factors as well as, of course, psychological factors. Mm-hmm. And the psychological factors are, you know, there's things like PTSD. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Like your point of view. Yes. When it comes to pain. Point of view. That's really, yes. It's true. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gosh, you looked like shocked that I would come up with something <laughs> at all. Do you know how well, many times I've seen POV on like reels or... POV? What's that? <laughs> Point of view. Oh, God. I'm just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I mean. Okay. I would see POV on these <laughs> reels and I'd go, puv, puv, just like you did. Like, what? That's yeah, that. I don't... It's a point of view. So people post their point of view about something? Right. Like, this is my current point of view, or this is, from my point of view, I see things this way. Huh. I remember the first time I saw ISO on, oh. z- z- I don't know, Facebook or Marketplace. I'm like, what <laughs> is that? And just in case anyone was like me, it's in search of. Yeah. I felt the same way about TIA. <laughs> TIA. Thanks in tickled. advance. Not oh. tickled. <laughs> I know it wasn't tickled. Oh, thanks, thanks in, in advance. advance. Yeah. I was reading it like must... it was too much information. I think the T just threw me off. Oh. I was like, wait, too? Wait. I couldn't get it. But I eventually did. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's okay, roll. Yeah. Let's roll Sheesh. past. We just went right. down a couple trails. Okay. Where were we? I is it real? It and is you said, real. Yes, it's real. Yes, it is real. Different people. Uh, have different levels and yeah like i said it's as unique as the person right and you also said that the reason that it's unique is partially genetics yes the biology your dna Mm -hmm. that's one big part of it can't change that yeah and then the other part of it is your environment your experience your point of view guess what you can't change that either you can't change the experiences that you've had that's true no you can't that's history now you can you can shake it up going forward you could work on you can. stuff. Yeah. So there is hope. Yes. Like if you have a low tolerance like Tracy does. Right. Mm. Why you would want a high tolerance, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going to say this, mm-hmm. that from this article, what pain actually is. It's both a biochemical and neurological transmission of an unpleasant sensation and an emotional experience. So that's where the, the emotional experience is 
part of the psychological part of that. And it's, because- it's like a big, huge communication, mm-hmm. right, from different parts of the body. So wherever the pain is emanating from, mm. they're sending signals to the brain. Yo, issues. Yes. Like quick. Yeah. And we need to do something about it. Yeah. True. It's kind of like 911. Yeah, it is kind of. Yeah. Okay. What do we have next on our takeaway? <laughs> well, we were going to share from our experiences. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Why don't you start? Well, I discovered that I had a high tolerance when a medical staff person said that I did. They were like, ooh, you have a high tolerance. You should be really describing more pain. Like you said, it's self describing or self reporting. Yeah, self reporting. So, so what I, was the condition that you were being treated for? I don't remember, to be honest. I think one of them, well, it happened a couple times, a Tracy. Sniffle? <laughs> no. One was when I had a kidney stone. Oh, yeah, that's very painful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had one. I know you haven't. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. I've heard. It, it, well, you're going to hear again. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I know what I, I, again, now when we recorded this yesterday, right away what came to mind was when Kramer on the Seinfeld show when he had one. Oh, so funny. I gotta look that up. Oh, it's hilarious because he, he just groans and yells so loud the whole apartment complex is going nuts and then he passes it finally, I think. But anyway, mm. yes, it's excruciating. And unlike labor, the pain doesn't go away. You know, like labor comes in waves when you're having contractions. Right. But kidney stone, no. It's just constant. Don't go away. Okay. Uh, And then another time was um, I had really, really bad back pain. And I had an issue in which they showed up in the MRI. And they're like, wow, you um, surprised you're walking at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like, oh, well, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. <laughs> so you see having a high pain tolerance as a point of pride, something you know, that you should be proud of. I don't know. I I know that I act silly and I say well, like what I just said. Oh, th- thank you. Mm. Mm. I guess in a way, like, yeah, I'm tough. Mm. Yeah. I'm tough. Right. You know. Right. Also, I, I will say, too, for Kenny that um, he had a really bad issue in his back and neck, oh, his neck, actually. And the doctor said, and this doctor is an absolute expert in neurological stuff. And he said, you should be practically crippled. I cannot believe you're not saying that this isn't more painful. Yeah. And said that he had, and I do believe Kenny does have a really high tolerance. Well, it can work for you and it can work against you. That's true, which mm-hmm, which I know you're going to describe. Right, because here's the reason why I say that. Knowing your husband mm-hmm. and knowing some of the issues, like what he's having right now. He's walking around on a foot that he mm. thinks is broken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's... I forgot about that. He's pushing Ugh. through it yeah. because he is at work on a big project and he doesn't think that he can take the time off to go and get an x-ray to see what's what yeah well i just rolled my eyes folks, yeah because it frustrates me well and if you're in that mindset there are pros and cons to that because one of the pros can be you know that type of person is the get it done type of person yeah they're gonna push through whatever obstacle there is mm-hmm. to get it done mm-hmm. on the flip side of that you could really do some damage to your body yeah um, yeah. You know, you're basically throwing yourself on the altar. Right. For the project. Right. In this case, it's a work project, but it could be like athletes are like that, you know, like they'll play with the hurts. You, you, yeah. may, you may have heard that term before mm-hmm. with football players mm-hmm. and such. And well, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're talking about the emotional experience portion of it mm-hmm. and psychological is I, I know this to be true. Plus, it's in these articles that. A lot of times you don't really pay attention to it. Um, and a lot of the factors that play into that is that you don't have a PTSD about certain pain or, or things like that, which I know you're going to talk about yeah. in, in, a, in a moment, but you kind of just don't pay attention to it. You just keep going because whatever it is you're you're doing at the moment has a higher priority right. in your head, right. like you're describing with Kenny. right. 
there's no time for this pain, so therefore this pain isn't that bad. Right. That's, that's what goes through my mind. And that person is mentally pushing the pain out of their mind yeah. as well. Right. That's what they're doing. In fact, uh, in preparation for this topic, I learned about a man who went to the doctor who had been gored by a bull. <laughs> God. So he oh. was <laughs> gored. He what does that even mean? Like he was gored, just gored like, like cured. Like okay. the bull has horns, you know, he, and the yes. horn went into the man. That's what I thought it meant. That's gored. Ah. All right. If I had been Why gored the... by a bull, okay, uh, if, oh, you would. <laughs> if Tracy is ever gored. I wish people could know. By a bull. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be like I survived. Yes, you would being gored by a bull. But this man, yeah. he was a Texan, and he was a cowboy. Mm-hmm. And they think they're the toughest people on earth, besides maybe the Vikings. You know, back in yeah. the day. Uh-huh. Well, he went to the hospital with this bull gore Uh problem yeah (laughs) they had to do surgery and fix him up and they kept offering him you know iv drugs yeah to dull the pain well he kept saying "Eh, i don't need it just a little tylenol or aspirin or something over the counter something like that yeah well and then he went home with no Mm painkiller he just took the little over-the-counter thing no kidding the next day he's back in the er Uh you know why because he got back in the pen with the bull. <gasps> After being gored by the bull, <laughs> now, now the bull has broken a bone. Now he has a broken bone. I think some people don't have those transmitters as much as others from the spinal cord to the brain. <laughs> Honestly, I really think that. Well, in, in certain sports, I guess you would call bull riding a sport. It's definitely a sport, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. In that sport, they expect you're going to break a bunch of bones. I don't think those yeah. those guys that get up on those bulls, mm. they have to have courage, you know. Adrenaline. They have to be fearless mm-hmm. and not be afraid of, of breaking something. This is true. I think, too, though, that certain things like, you know, boxers and all of that, they're, I think their adrenaline is so high that that also helps prevent the sensation of pain. Too. Well, the mental game definitely plays a part in it. Because I remember when we were at the the that event that we went to at the fairgrounds and we saw the mechanical bull, you know? Oh. We walked past yeah. it when we were going mm-hmm. to leave. And I looked at it and I went, oh, that looks like fun. And then I saw it moving. And I'm like, no, never mind. That's <laughs> right. a mechanical bull. Yeah. Right. Where you land on <laughs> an inflated surface. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. That the being said. Okay. So we talked about pain tolerance being somewhat DNA. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then somewhat environmental yeah. in your emotional response to things and, yeah the guy An who experience. was gored by a bull he <laughs> had to have you know viking dna yeah and just grew, probably grew up his whole life in that world mm, yeah maybe, where probably. where injuries are kind of like a maybe like a trophy Ain't no thing right yeah like a little notch yeah like, in the belt right yes like this is my my thing sure yeah not well, the they case say with Tracy. that some of the contributors to feeling pain is depression, anxiety, and like you pointed out, athletes can withstand more pain. People who smoke or are overweight. I'm picturing cowboys as none of those things, right? Well, uh, other than like an athlete, but the Marlboro man smoked. Catherine, he's not real, Trace. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but see what I mean, though. I. I would imagine that the cowboy uh, who got gored yeah. was probably fit, probably doesn't suffer from depression or anxiety because he's riding right. those bulls. Right. You can't you don't just have time whip it right out of him. Be depressed. <laughs> you know? Well, and he had an agenda. But, he had things yes. that had to be done. Just like yeah. we we're talking about Kenny, he had this work project that needed to be done. So this guy's like, oh, well, I was gored by a bull. I still have to do X, Y, and Z. I got to get out there and do it. I want to do it. No, I think it's more than want. I think they feel like they must do it. They have to do it. Mm. Um, Yeah, they probably do. I do. Now, in my case, with my pain tolerance, 
-hmm. because we talked about mine being low. Mm -hmm. I would say I have no pain tolerance. I do not want to tolerate pain. You don't. You know what just came to mind? We recorded this episode yesterday, but it didn't work out. After we were done, we had lunch. And you were slicing the lettuce for us. And yes. He, and you sliced your finger. I did. And we just did the pain tolerance thing. Right, and we hurt. just got done talking about you. So how is that? It's much better. Today? It's much better. Oh. Yeah. See it? Oh, yeah. It's right on her fingernail line. Yeah. So that's a sensitive area. And my husband was home yesterday yeah. from work. And he jumped into action. He did. He took care of me. Mm-hmm. Got me a Band-Aid. Opened it up. And- See? Baby in the family. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. Let's talk for a minute about me. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Uh, first experience with pain. Actually, I didn't talk about this yesterday, but I thought about it since then. My very first experience with intense pain was when I broke my leg. I was 10 years old. I was ice skating in my little town. My brother and sister were with me. And I was trying to be like Dorothy Hamill. This mm. was like when she was really popular. You know, mm-hmm. I had the yeah, haircut and the whole bit. You had that haircut? Eventually I did. Uh-huh. At this time I had long hair. But I, I was a fan. <clears throat> I was a fan. Yeah, and I had too. gotten some new ice skates for Christmas. Uh-huh. And I went out and tried them out. And I thought, I could do that. That doesn't look that hard. And I start twirling around <laughs> thinking like I can just jump right in. Right? Yeah. And I fell on myself. Like I oh. I fell on my own leg and Ooh. I broke both bones all the way through. Oof. Clear through. Not just cracked, not just fractured. Yeah. They call it I think they call it like a compound fracture. Well, mm. both of my bone legs <laughs> Oh gosh. I mean my leg bones. Yeah. Gotcha. They were bone legs. <laughs> <laughs> they were broken. And of course I couldn't uh, get up. The pain that I felt now as a ten year old searing. It was so intense mm-hmm. that I thought I was gonna die. Mm-hmm. And I told my sister, I'm going to die. I am dying <laughs> right here. I'm going to I get totally die. picture you and saying the, that. This was in nineteen seventy five. There were no cell phones. My mother had dropped us off at the little mm-hmm. ice skating there area. You go. And my brother, we didn't have our shoes or anything. We just had our ice skates. Oh. My brother ran to get my mother Mm. in his ice skates. Oh. He ran blocks. I don't know. It was like three blocks. But it was a ways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In ice skates. Yeah. And I'm I'm there with my sister waiting, you know. Crying. Oh. Wailing. (laughs) crying doesn't even begin to describe it howling maybe i'm gonna die i'm dying i thought i was literally gonna die and they did you know got got me to the hospital Uh did the x-rays and it was a good thing i didn't try to stand up because if i had Mm -hmm. tried to stand up Mm -hmm. like if i didn't know that I was dying. And if you didn't pay attention, to, didn't right. know you were dying. If I didn't pay attention to the pain, the <laughs> yeah. bones would have come through the skin. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. You can't put weight on that stuff. Oh, gosh. And I was very fortunate that I don't have problems today, you know, because I was still yeah, I was growing. Just thinking that. And I didn't have to have surgery, but I did have to... Get it reset? Oh, it had to be set. That was, mm, that was painful, too. I'll bet. Having them to set that. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was a long recovery. I was out of school for over a month because I, I could not even go vertical. Mm-hmm. I had to stay horizontal for like a month. Yikes. It was a thing. And the cast was all the way up, all the stuff. So anyway, that was my very first experience with real searing pain. Uh-huh. Like I'm going to die pain. Well, fast forward and, um, to my age. I think I was 24 when I had, oh no. Yeah. 24 when I had my first child. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get married at 23. I have my first child at 24. And uh, we we couldn't afford an epidural. That was right. uh, our insurance didn't cover it. They uh-huh. had epidurals. This was in 1990. They had epidurals uh-huh. at the hospital. Yeah. And women raved about them. They mm-hmm. said they were so great. <laughs> but my husband's insurance wouldn't cover it. <laughs> oh. So they said if you want it, yeah. you have to pay for it. It was like $800 or something mm-hmm. like that. And we didn't have the money. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Yeah, how hard can it be?" Gosh, I'm surprised you thought that way. Well, I kind of didn't have a choice, really. I didn't see where I had options. Yeah. And I thought to myself, women have been having babies, you know, since mm -hmm. the beginning of time. We'll just see how this goes. Yeah. Oh, no. fields. (laughs) It hurt. Yeah. It hurt like crazy. Oh, yeah. As we know. 
Uh-huh. And then the very next year, I got pregnant again mm. after that one was born. Because you didn't learn. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah. I got pregnant like just four or five months later. Mm-hmm. So back-to-back pregnancies. Yeah. And now this time, now I got another one in there. Uh-huh. And I say to Ron, I go, sell the car. Yes. Sell all your <laughs> clothes. Get another job. Uh-huh. Rob a bank. I don't care what you do. Uh-huh. Come up with the 800 bucks and give it to those people because yeah. I am not having this kid mm-hmm. like I had that one. Mm-hmm. So he does it. Mm-hmm. Superman. Yes. He, he gets the money together and he gives it to the hospital. Now I'm feeling good. And I get in there and I'm like, where's my shot? And mm-hmm. they said, oh, we can't give it to you. You're, you're, you're too far along. Too late. <laughs> baby's, baby's ready to be born. And at that time, I was, I was in a lot of excruciating pain, mm-hmm. but I was trying to be very quiet about it. So yeah. I was not screaming and yelling. Mm-hmm. I was just super quiet about it. And the nurse was can't like, I can't even oh. imagine that. Yeah. For you. I know. Well, this is why, Catherine, you mm-hmm. can't because we didn't know each other then, right? Mm-hmm. So this is why I've changed my ways. Okay. Because <laughs> I learn very quickly. You don't have to tell me twice. Yeah. You're a quick learner. I'm quiet. There's a girl in labor in the bed next to me because that's how we rolled back mm-hmm. in the early 90s. It was two in a room. <laughs> It was none of this will give you a little birthing suite, Mm -hmm. you know, make it look like a hotel room. Mm -hmm. No. She was screaming her head off. Yeah. Well, they came right away with the drugs for her. Uh You know why? (laughs) Because she was screaming her head off. I could have been in just as much pain as her, but because I was quiet about it, the nurse says, you're tolerating this pain quite well. Uh And I was like, I don't think you know what's going on Uh inside of me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's when I learned that the squeaky wheel gets gets the oil. Yeah. You got you to gotta verbalize it. Yes. So for the next three babies I had, I got an epidural. Oh, my gosh. My first one, too, the epidural, I did have it, but it wore off before the intense. Which often happens. Productive labor happened. <gasps> oh, it was awful. I heard eight babies being born in <laughs> the other room. Yeah. Eight. That's how long I was in labor. It was it's, it, awful. I don't even understand how we're even here. How I, is it I that women know. have just continued to go along, along, along? And repeatedly. I know. I that. can't get I, it. That, I don't get it. I had five of them. I know. Whatever. You know, when you were talking about your broken leg, it reminded me. I never had anything like that when I was um, a kid other than one time my dad had me on his bicycle um, and I he sat me on the bar. Hmm. I mean, I was little, but anyway sat me on that bar, you know, on the bike in the, in front of him. Mm-hmm. And my ankle caught in the wheel as he Ooh. was biking. And Ooh. so it flipped me off the bike and my ankle was stuck in the uh, spool or whatever it's called. Wow. Yes. And it sprained. It didn't break it, but it sprained it, which is, they say, just as painful. If It can be worse. Yeah. yeah. And that, I remember that, like excruciating pain. Yeah. It's it, pain is a is a tough thing and it's something that we realize we're not going to get out of life without having some of it. Mm-hmm. So we better learn <laughs> how to thinking, deal with it. Fast forward years later, I'm married, kids, we had a camper and I was cleaning the camper after a trip and I missed the step when I cuz I was rushing. I remember that. Yes, I fell out of the camper onto the gravel driveway, <laughs> sprained my ankle. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was awful. Had to wear a boot. I remember the yes. boot. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. Well, okay. all right. Uh, a couple more things because I have this on my list. Mm-hmm. The pain scale, the zero to 10 pain scale. Oh, yes. You know, they came up with that because when medical people are doing an assessment, right? So mm-hmm. when the nurse is assessing you, when you go into the ER or into the hospital or the doctor's office or whatever, mm-hmm. and you say, I have this problem, they check your vitals, right? Mm-hmm. They check your vitals. So they check your blood pressure, they check your heartbeat, your oxygen thing, they put the little finger doodad on your finger, and all these things that they can check, your temperature and blah, blah, blah. Well, there's no way for them to screen for your pain, but they want to know how much pain are you in right now. Mm -hmm. And they actually have to. It's a law. They have to ask you that. Oh, yeah. That's why they don't forget. Because they could be sued. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a law. Some way, somehow, they discovered that people's pain level needs to be monitored. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Well, when they come in and ask you what's your pain level, zero being nothing and 10 being the worst pain of your life, let's say you with your high pain pain tolerance over there, Mm -hmm. let's say you say, I'm at a level three, okay? Uh And they're going to go, okay, she's at a three Mm -hmm. right now. Well, what they want to see is they want to see a decrease in your pain after they've done their whatever magic stuff they're going to do. They need a baseline to go by. It's a baseline, right. That's why now I realize why the nurses roll their eyes when they say, how much pain are you in? And I go, 10. Mm -hmm. I'm in a 10. (laughs) Duh, that's why I'm here. Give me the medicine. Idiot. (laughs) No. (laughs) But see, they don't know about the broken leg. They don't know about the epidural that I've been through. And how yesterday you talked about witnessing your mom oh, and yeah. paying attention to, you know, she had pain. Right. And see, that's again, pain is an indicator of something that's going on. And yeah. in my mom's case, she had cancer and it ended up taking her life. Yeah. And had she gone in sooner, she probably wouldn't have beat, she would not have beat the cancer. It's it's not the type that you can beat. Mm-hmm. You do die from it. Mm-hmm. But... Her kidneys were in failure at the point when she mm. was finally diagnosed mm-hmm. with her. Uh, it was called multiple myeloma. It's a kind of like a leukemia. It's a like blood cancer, but mm. it affects the bones. Anyway, the poor gal, she went through a lot. Yeah. Mm, probably wouldn't have helped her too much to be diagnosed much earlier. Maybe it would have, but this was like 30 years ago. So they've come a long way in 30 years right. with that disease. Mm-hmm. And they do have treatments and such. And they even have a genetic thing that they can test to see if you're likely to have it. Mm-hmm. So our bodies have signals. And when you feel pain, find out what's going on. Right. And our brains have knowledge. And when we witness or experience past pains yeah. in ourselves or others, that also affects your tolerance. And well, Yes. And the other thing, too, that is important as I'm thinking about this is it's important to acknowledge if somebody says they're in pain, just agree with them. You know what I mean? Like if they say, I have this pain, Mm -hmm. unless they're lying. I was going to (laughs) say, yeah, as you said that, I kind of turned my head like there's some people who there's people who have chronic pain and then there's people who have chronic lying um, issues. issues. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. well, let me rephrase that. <coughs> you all right? I'm getting over being <laughs> sick. And every now and then I have some residual stuff. Yeah. All right. Let me rephrase yes. that. Mm-hmm. If Tracy says, <laughs> I'm in pain. No. Just believe me. I think if Catherine says, I'm in pain, you better believe that there's pain because I don't say it much unless it's really. You say it a lot. You say, I got a headache. I hurt. My I'm... chest hurts. <laughs> you say it a lot. I've seen you say it a ton. Okay. Okay. Let's put it this way. <laughs> if it were you. You. This is if what it you were you. <laughs> you would be. You, you would just be passed out. You would be like, I can't do it. I can't record today. My toe hurts. Girl. I push through it. You. Oh, gosh. It's Okay. <laughs> All right, it's self-reported, but whatever. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. All right, one more story. I forgot we'll, to talk about my toe pain. Okay, I talk about it. Severe, you talk about it. Severe, <laughs> severe pain in um, my toe. It took three years before oh. I, I had it <laughs> looked at. And and yeah, I have to have stupid medicine for it because it's that bad. It's neuropathy, supposedly. They don't know for sure. But, but the medicine does help. It helps. It does. And thank God there is medicine. There are <sighs> therapies. You know, there's there's things that can help yeah. these issues that we have. Thank I'm God. getting old. I take medicine for that. Medicine for my restless leg. Do you, uh, okay. So you have to take medicine <gasps> to fix these issues. Mm-hmm. But they're fixed. Uh, yeah. We were I just ta- hope we, they don't get any worse. Yeah. Well, and even if they do, then you work on that. That's mm. what. That's why you have a care team. That's why you have doctors that you can go to. True. To get support. Yes. There's no shame in that game. Yes. All right. One more thing. The wrist. I was going to talk about when I hurt my wrist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about something real serious. I'm like, what did we forget? And I'm like, wait. <laughs> our takeaways. <laughs> And I'm back to me because I'm dying to say about redheads. Oh, okay. Oh, well, just real quick, Hold. redheads <laughs> experience more pain than anybody else because they have a mutated gene. Period. 
That's it. Go ahead, Trace. Let's talk about your little wrist. <laughs> Sorry. She's wiping her I'm eye sorry. because she's I'm like crying. <laughs> oh, what happened with your wrist? Gosh, listen. I, see, okay. Your point of view. Listen to you. I know how I listen sound. to you. I know how I sound. Okay. Okay. This is what happened. I hurt my wrist. Mm. And I went to the doctor. Yeah. Because that's what I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Things. When did this, when was this? This was when, uh, when I was working for Southwest. I was like in that time frame. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. I remember I put the groceries on my, oh, on yes. my arm. Yeah. To my, gosh, it was that long ago? Yeah. Oh. What happened was I was working full time mm-hmm. and we had a house full of kids as we, as we did for 20 years or 30 years, whatever it was. And I was coming back home from the grocery store. Yeah. And I took the grocery bags mm-hmm. and loaded them up on my left arm, mm-hmm. you know, one after another, after yes. another, after another. Yeah. And I had a bunch of other stuff in my right arm. Mm-hmm. I think I might have had like my purse and my whatever, all the stuff. Yeah. And I come in so like you a, only have to do one or right, two like trips. Like a pack mule, yeah. like a mule <laughs> coming from the car. <laughs> Comes the <a> mule. <laughs> Get out of my way. Because <laughs> right, I didn't want to have to right. go back. Right. Well unloaded the groceries and what ended up happening was i damaged tissue Mm -hmm. in my wrist as a result of all that weight ouch all that pressure and it damaged nerves in Mm -hmm. there so there was nerve damage yeah well that doesn't show up on an x-ray because i ended up going to the orthopedic guy that we both know dr lee Uh who is um not only a fantastic orthopedic doctor Mm -hmm. but he's also a personal friend Mm -hmm. okay so we went to church together he knows me i i know his wife the kids all the stuff well i go to him and so he knows i have five kids Mm -hmm. and he's gonna do an exam of my wrist and he's already done an x-ray because that's the first thing he does Mm -hmm. and on the x-ray you don't see anything Mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong in the x-ray so now he has to touch and feel you know like how painful is this (laughs) Uh uh-oh and i tell him it really is painful it mm-hmm. really hurts. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not crying because it's just sitting there. Yeah. Well, then he starts to touch it. Uh huh. And I start to cry <laughs> oh, right there in the office. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and he goes, "Wow!" And so here's the statement he makes. He says, "I would have thought you would have a higher pain tolerance because of the five because you gave birth to five babies. Uh huh. And they were big, by the way. Yeah. All right. And I looked at him like. Like I could kill him with my eyes. Mm, I'll bet. And I said, <laughs> I told you it hurts. Yeah. I told you that. Why didn't you believe me? Uh, because. It, it hurts. Uh, yeah. Because you had five babies. Yeah. But see, that's the the thing that we have to really get over mm. in terms of our opinions of what somebody else's pain should feel like. Yeah. That's true. Remember Nick? When we were, uh, yeah. he was our trainer. Yeah. And he had a version of what should be painful. <laughs> You're right. And he pushed us to the limit. And guess what? I have permanent damage, too, in my Is uh, it tennis, like tennis elbow. elbow. Yeah. Because yeah. of the weights, because he, his too heavy. level of what... I'm damaged. <laughs> and it hurts sometimes. It flares See? up. Mm. Nick, yeah. if you're listening, mm. which I doubt. But. Do you forgive him? Doesn't sound like it. I don't know that I ever thought to forgive him. Oh, I guess I thought, you know, he was just a, a young man trying to right m- get the most out of uh, out of us. So right, that's all right. Anything else about your experience with pain? Hmm. I'm done with mine. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, yeah, all good. I'm done. All right. Well, let's move on to coping mechanisms. All right. What you got? Well, one technique that is proven to to work, and don't laugh, folks, because we know when you're in pain, you can't imagine using breathing as a technique to cope. But they say that it does work. Yeah. Well, Um, every every woman remembers learning if they took Lamaze class. Oh, yeah, if they've had... They right. remember learning the counting, the focus on a stationary object, you know, in the other part of the room, mm. and breathe, and all of that. Mm-hmm. You know, breathing, I just learned this oh. this morning about breathing. Yeah. It's a good thing to look into. Obviously, we all breathe every single day. Mm-hmm. All right. However, we don't 
do the type of breathing that is yeah, proper really helpful mm-hmm. to relief relief in terms of uh, pain as well as stress. And if you can get to a place where you do mindful breathing mm-hmm. every day as a practice, mm-hmm. it can really help you in a lot of different areas. Yeah. I'm going to call the ENT doctor and get my sinuses checked. Out. Are you? Uh, yeah, because I have issues with my sinuses mm. and I would like to be able to breathe to the, you know, the way that you're supposed to. Well, it could be an allergy. You know, it could be, <laughs> it, could be. it could be inflammation due to an allergy because, yeah. you know, that's what Ron, my husband has had bre- breathing issues through the nose mm. for our whole marriage mm-hmm. and he just now has a solution to that. Mm-hmm. And that is he has to take a shot in his leg mm. every two weeks. Yeah, that's right. It's some kind of an allergy shot. Yeah. And it it's helped. You know, now that um, we're talking about this, I remember I went to see the uh, ENT doctor right when the pandemic started. Oh. And it and was got off track. like, yeah, I had to wait in the parking lot. And then they called me in. And then when I got there, I'm like, oh, my God. He was like all suited up like an ET. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> with the garb yeah because it had ju- it was like march of 2020 what do they call that stuff p p p personal protective e, yeah p p e p p e i think personal protective equipment something like that okay yeah anyway another way that you can uh cope with the pain is retrain your mind um you kind of have to seek help the proper help for that but you can change the perception of of pain in your brain and the perception you haven't changed the nerves, actually, but you can change your uh, perception of it. It makes a perceive. big difference because the fear of pain. Mm-hmm. There was a study done that I that I discovered mm-hmm. where when people had uh, fear about the pain that was coming, like an anxiety oh, yeah, about it, like before you get a shot, made or it more whatever. intense. Um, it, it makes the pain worse. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are a couple ways that you can cope with it. And I'm looking through I'm looking through the information I have. Did we talk about Oh, aerobic exercise and being kind of physical overall can help and mental imagery, putting a pleasant picture whatever that might be in your mind. Meditation was mentioned quite a bit yeah. in the things that I discovered. Mhm. I I would recommend scripture memory as a yeah. form of meditation yeah, as well right. as, so it's a spiritual practice, but it has physical benefits as well mm-hmm. in terms of meditating on mm-hmm. a portion of scripture that can really bring you a lot of comfort. Yeah. In, in fact, that, that very thing happened to me when my mom did pass away. Mm-hmm. I was in my 20s yeah. and I was driving to my hometown to say my final goodbyes she was at the end you mm-hmm. know she was still alive but she was yeah. nearing the end and isaiah forty one ten came into my mind and yeah. i hadn't even looked at it for t- at least a decade mm-hmm. and that verse says so do not fear for i am with you do not be dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you and help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand mm-hmm. and i memorized it in college mm-hmm. but you know didn't give it much thought after that, to be honest. I was busy. you were busy. I had my two kids. Yeah. I was, you know. And when I needed it, mm-hmm. because I was afraid, mm-hmm. I knew that I was going to say goodbye to my mom. I didn't want that to happen. I couldn't do anything about it. But that verse gave me a lot of comfort. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think the key there is the comfort. Uh, yeah. Because we're not saying that these methods are going to take your pain away. These no. are just coping mechanisms. And ways to seek comfort um, until you get the proper aid that you need. You know, these right? Are- and you know, if you think about Jesus as our example, mm-hmm. right? Look at what he went through before he went to the cross. Mm. He knew what was yeah. coming. Yeah. He Ooh. and he was. Yeah, that's a good example. Well, it is a good example because first of all, he knew that he was going to be betrayed by a friend. Yeah. I mean, he was really stabbed in the back yeah. by a close friend. Mm-hmm. You know, Judas was one of his guys. Mm-hmm. He was one of his followers. He was a disciple. Mm-hmm. He he was one of the 
chosen, Mm -hmm. you know, the inner circle around Jesus. And he knew that that was going to happen. So there's the emotional pain of that. Right. And then, of course, back in that day, crucifixion Mm -hmm. was um, (laughs) common. Mm-hmm. for criminals and they would torture yeah and they would publicly put them on display what what is that sounds like somebody's not mowing their lawn okay anyway Sorry. anyway they would publicly put people on display as they were hanging on crosses as a deterrent mm-hmm. um, regarding yeah. crime mm-hmm. and such so he knew about that and yeah. how rough that was going to be and he also knew what it was going to be like to bear the weight of the burden of the oh, sin yeah. of the world. The wrath. He knew from... the spiritual depths yeah. that he was going to go to yeah, and the pain did. that he was going to feel uh-huh. by being the Lamb of God. He right. knew that. And he was 100%, he was God, but he was 100% physically man. man. Right. So he was feeling it he, all. He was. Just like, yeah. and And so ahead of it, one thing, what does he do? He gets prepared, right? Yeah. He, the, he does the Last Supper, that sort of thing. He washes the disciples' feet. He's telling them all this stuff. He goes to the garden, and he's going to pray. Praise. He sweats blood. Yes. Because he's under that much distress. Mm-hmm. And he begs God, if there's any way that yeah. we could do something different here, <laughs> mm-hmm. that would be great. Yeah. But yet, but, he still goes forward. Yeah. 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 Moin. Mm. Mm. I told you. That's... I told you it was going to be better than yesterday because none of that came up. No, right. That's you're right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else? No. Coping mechanisms. We talked about breathing. We talked about meditation. We mm-hmm. talked about imagery. Uh, we talked about exercising. Right. Yeah. Those are all good. Drugs help too. Oh, I forgot to say this too. Yes. Vocalizing. They research. Oh, right. Has proven. That when you yell out, say, ow, or, you know, moan, groan, that actually helps. And they have compared it to people who keep silent, <laughs> like you were saying earlier that you did. And uh, it is some kind of stress relief, some kind of relief right. when somebody Plus vocalizes. people around you know you're in pain <laughs> yeah. and they're going to help you. That's right. All right. Okay. Well, this has been great. All right. Where are we now? We need to do our prescription let's Mm -hmm. do the call to action and then we'll do the inspirational close all right all right here's a prescription for you okay Mm -hmm. if you're in pain or when you're in pain Mm -hmm. let's say that you break something or you have a surgery Mm -hmm. so you're post-op and now you have pain okay the prescription is become a humor consumer yes true Mm -hmm. it's true because when when you laugh it's it's a relief for your brain yeah yeah, and yeah. you're and all those endorphins shoot off mm-hmm. legal, moral, you know, ethical, all of it, all the drugs, yeah, that God made, right? And it coats your brain, yeah. And I've I've always said that it's like a spontaneous combustion of the brain, mm-hmm. laughter. Mm-hmm. That to me is uh, is fantastic. Yes, of course. Everybody loves to laugh, yes. and when you are laughing, first of all, it's impossible to think about your problems. Mm-hmm. So you're not analyzing it. You're not thinking about it. You're yeah. not trying to figure out a way to fix it and yeah. all that. Kind right. Letting go of it. Exactly. For the moment. And also physically, it feels so good to laugh. Yeah. All right. It does. So when you're in pain, mm. turn to comedy, turn to humor, whatever it is that lights you up, whatever it is that makes you laugh, mm-hmm. go to that thing and consume it. Yeah. You know, um, I did a talk one time for a corporation that was on um, on this very thing, mm-hmm. was like the benefits of humor, mm-hmm. the health benefits of humor. Okay. And I learned about Norman Cousins. He was an American journalist who had a connective tissue disease. Yeah. Extremely painful. It's called like ankle spondylitis or something like that. Yeah. And it's, you know, you can't do anything about it. There was no cure for it. There was no real pain relief other than like Ugh. getting to the point where they give you enough drugs where you're kind of night night. And he didn't want that. Mm-hmm. He wanted to still live his life. Well, he he turned to comedy. Mm-hmm. And he would consume like a half an hour of a sitcom or whatever it was that would make him laugh out loud. Mm -hmm. And he found that it gave him... Some relief? Relief. A couple hours of of analgesic relief. And he wrote a book, and I just looked it up. Let me see. What's the name of his book? Oh, it's called The Anatomy of an Illness. Uh. And he talked about what 
you know, his illness Mm -hmm. kind of did for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. If you ask me. Mm -hmm. All right. So consume more humor. Of course, you can come here to our podcast. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole library of episodes. Yes. Right? What's this one? This one's episode number 85. It is. I know. We're growing, aren't we? Yes. Yes. We're going along. But we need people to um, comment. Good, positive comments. Yeah, yeah be careful Don't, what you ask yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> we do, because we feel, um, we talked about this yesterday, mm-hmm. we feel a little bit lonely, yeah. like it's just me and you here, mm-hmm. yippity yapping. Mm. But so if you're listening to this podcast, if you can hear my voice right now, send us a message. Yeah. Tell us how our podcast has impacted you in a positive way. Yeah. Give us a review. Hit follow or subscribe. Right. All that stuff. Yeah. Share us. Somehow that helps Come on. <laughs> in the universe of podcast land. Yeah. I don't understand it all, but I know it helps. Yeah, I don't either. All right. Um, scripture. Finally, scripture, Romans 8, verse 18. And it says this, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Mm. Pretty profound. Yeah. Looking forward to that. When the time is right. Yeah. And, you know, we mentioned earlier that nobody gets through life without some pain mm-hmm. and some suffering. Mm-hmm. I do recall um, the Corey Ten Boom story. Oh, yeah. The Hiding Place. She yeah. wrote that book. She and her sister Betsy were mm. in a concentration camp. They, She survived. Uh, Corey did. Her sister did not. And I believe it was her sister, Betsy, yeah, Betsy Ten Boom, so who said these words, there is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. Mm. If you can say that from a concentration camp. Yeah, wow. And she lost her life there. They mm-hmm. killed her. Mm-hmm. They killed her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she paid the ultimate price with yeah. her life. Yeah. But think about where she is now. Right. Yes. If your faith is that you believe that we have an afterlife and yeah. it's with Jesus in heaven. Mm-hmm. If you place your trust in him as your savior and he's covered your sins, if that's your faith, then that's what we believe. That whatever we go through in this earth, whatever suffering, whatever pain, because we don't know what's ahead. Yeah. Th- that girl did not expect to go that way. I no, guarantee gosh, you, right. none of them expected that. Mm-hmm. But she had the courage and the faith to say that. Yeah, That's inspiring. Yes, it is. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. All right. Next week, what's our episode? Farting. <laughs> F-A-R-D, like dog. What is it? I-N-G. What is that? Is it... um? getting ready with makeup yeah 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 i don't know too much about it i learned of it from you yeah and i thought what are you saying farting (laughs) farting yeah we're gonna do an episode on that i think it's gonna be fun so tune in yeah well you've been listening to the life happens laugh anyway podcast and i'm still comedian tracy degraff i'm still Catherine. see you next time 